I started this video, I turned the video on me, but I'm sitting here in the dark, so it was just a dark screen, so if I was going to chit chat for a while, at least you could take a look at the, <laughs> look at the road I'm driving on. It's a little dicey out here tonight. I just left Fargo, North Dakota. And I'm already in uh, Minnesota, don't you know? But uh, I wish I'd have thought about it earlier. Because I just had one of those rare occurrences that doesn't happen a whole lot anymore. You know, a whole lot of guys don't run their CBs. Probably half the trucks out here don't have a CB on the truck. I just, I just flat don't understand why somebody would be out here driving across the country, backing into docks and doing everything else and not have a CB radio. To me, that's just nuts. Here a couple weeks ago, I was snowed in at a truck stop. And of course, the place was packed and it was tight. And those of us that had CBs we're spotting for each other with the radios, helping each other back in. Those that didn't have a CB radio were backing in tight with no spot. You know, that, that's just one of those things, man. A radio comes in handy. You see those pileups on I-80 and stuff. I, everybody's seen that video. Things like that don't happen when you're running your radio. And you can't be using that radio as a backup radio. Some guys, they got the radios in the truck, but they don't turn them on until they get to a backup. Well, then it's too late. You know, I run my radio 24-7, every minute. You know, I just got the squelch turned up, so I can't hear anybody, but then, you know, just a few miles of me. See if I turn it down. I just turn the squelch up until the static goes dead on it. But you kind of know what's going on. You know, guys that, are, you know, like right now I'm going eastbound. The guys that are going westbound, if I need to know about something up here in front of me, these guys over there going westbound be hollering at me going, hey, eastbound, you got a brake check about five miles ahead of you. And I'd already know about what's going on and everything long before I even get there. And a lot of times, I'll get a warning of a brake check, you know, of an accident or whatever. And especially if there's a fatality involved in it, you can end up sitting there parked on the interstate for four hours because of a fatality, maybe even longer. Where generally I get news about those type of things, you know, 20, 30 minutes before I even get to them. And I can slow down, pull up my Google Maps, and find me a way around it. Not ever slow down or miss a beat. So I just don't understand why guys don't run their radios. And while I was talking about a rare occurrence, I remember back in the 80s when we would drive you know, this is what we do at night. We'd sit here and chit chat with each other going down the interstate. You know, we're both going the same direction. You'd sit here and have a conversation for 20, 30 minutes, learn all kinds of things about trucking. And uh, that was my rare occurrence tonight. Come out of Fargo and uh, saw a bear go past me going eastbound just by the time we hit the way station. And I'd keyed up the mic and I said, you got a bear going eastbound past the noise station right now, guys. And I thought about it for a minute and I went, keyed the mic back up and I said, Dad, Gum, if you're speeding on a night like tonight, you probably earned the ticket anyway. And I keyed the mic. Another old boy keyed up and he goes, that's for Dad, Gum, right? He goes, we just come from Jamestown, Fargo, driving in the mist. It's 18 degrees been driving on black ice. There ain't no way I'm going to be speeding tonight. Me and him got chit-chatting back and forth. 
just generally here on 94, you know, he'd be running 74 mile an hour all the way to Minneapolis on a night like tonight. He said, I'm going to back it down to 68. That's where we was laughing. I told him I was in a company truck. I ain't going to run but about 64. I got the crew set on light speed. That's as fast as she'll go. We were laughing. We got to talking back and forth. You know, he's an owner operator. He'd been pulling uh, salt water for the oil fields back here in North Dakota. Got tired of doing that and started getting bitter cold. Went back to hauling freight. I don't know if you can see that snow blowing across the road or not. You know, I look in the video, looks like a clean road. But here in person, all I'm looking at is snow blowing across the road. It's a cold, nasty night, folks. But anyway, that's a rare occurrence. Me and him just drove along and chit-chatted for about 15 minutes about this, that, and the other. We're talking about company driving versus being an owner-operator things that are going on today and then you learn more about trucking that way it was kind of like sitting in a truck stop sitting talking to the old drivers the guys just don't chit chat like that on the CB like they used to every now and then you know I'll get into a conversation or we'll, we'll talk here about a month ago we had another old boy we were where were we going? I think we was going southbound down to Texas. Now at the peak and it was late at night. Probably racket job for at least an hour or so going down the road. You know, we used to keep keep each other company out here. Then we take care of each other. It's a real shame that people don't do that in the industry. CB 24-7. Be a real trucker. <laughs> be a real trucker. <laughs> I cracked me up. Anyway, y'all have a good night. God bless each and every one of you. Remember, you can change the world. All you gotta do is be nice to each other. Bye-bye.